Act Three of The Beggar's Opera by John Gay. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene One, Scene Newgate, Locket Lucy. To be sure, wench, you must have been aiding and abetting to help him to this escape. Sir, here have been Peachum and his daughter Polly, and to be sure they know the ways of Newgate as well as if they had been born and bred in the place all their lives. Why must all your suspicion light upon me? Lucy, Lucy, I will have none of these shuffling answers. Well then, if I know anything of him, I wish I may be burnt. Keep your temper, Lucy, or I shall pronounce you guilty. Keep yours, sir. I do wish I may be burned. I do. And what can I say more to convince you? Did he tip handsomely? How much did he come down with? Come, I say, don't cheat your father. I shall not be angry with you. Perhaps you have made a better bargain with him than I could have done. How much, my good girl? You know, sir, I am fond of him and would have given money to have kept him with me. Ah, Lucy, thy education might have put thee more upon thy guard, for a girl in the bar of an alehouse is always besieged. Dear sir, mention not my education, for twas to that I owe my ruin. Here forty-one, if love's a sweet passion. When young at the bar you first taught me to score, and bid me be free of my lips and no more i was kissed by the parson the squire and the sot when the guest was departed the kiss was forgot but his kiss was so sweet and so closely he pressed that i languished and pined till i granted the rest if you can forgive me sir i will make a fair confession for to be sure he hath been a most barbarous villain to me and so you have let him escape hussy have you when a woman loves, a kind look, a tender word can persuade her to anything, and I could ask no other bribe. Thou wilt always be a vulgar slut, Lucy. If you had not been looked upon as a fool, you should never do anything but upon the foot of interest. Those that act otherwise are their own bubbles. But love, sir, is a misfortune that may happen to the most discreet woman, and in love we are all fools alike notwithstanding all he swore i am now fully convinced that polly peachum is actually his wife did i let him escape fool that i was to go to her polly will wheedle herself into his money and then peachum will hang him and cheat us both so i am to be ruined because forsooth you must be in love a very pretty excuse i could murder that impudent happy strumpet i gave him his life and that creature enjoys the sweets of it ungrateful macheath air forty two south sea ballad my love is all madness and folly alone i lie toss tumble and cry what a happy creature is polly was ever such a wretch as i with rage i redden like scarlet that my dear inconstant varlet stark blind to my charms is lost in the arms of that jilt that inveigling harlot stark blind to my charms is lost in the arms of that jilt that inveigling harlot this this my resentment alarms and so after all this mischief i must stay here to be entertained with your caterwauling mistress puss out of my sight wanton strumpet you shall fast and mortify yourself into reason with now and then a little handsome discipline to bring you to your senses go scene two lock it peachum then intends to outwit me in this affair but i'll be even with him the dog is leaky in his liquor so i'll ply him that way get the secret from him and turn this affair to my own advantage lions wolves and vultures don't live together in herds droves or flocks 
Oh, animals of prey, man is the only sociable one. Every one of us preys upon his neighbour, and yet we herd together. Peachum is my companion, my friend. According to the custom of the world, indeed, he may quote thousands of precedents for cheating me. And shall not I make use of the privilege of friendship to make him a return? Air 43, Packington's Pound. Thus gangsters united in friendship are found, though they know that their industry always a cheat. They flock to their prey at the dice box's sound, and join to promote one another's deceit. But if by mishap they fail of a chap, to keep in their hands they each other entrap. Like pikes, lank with hunger, who miss of their ends, they bite their companions and prey on their friends. Now, Peachum, you and I, like honest tradesmen, are to have a fair trial, which of us two can overreach the other. Lucy! Enter Lucy. Are there any of Peachum's people now in the house? Filch, sir, is drinking a quartern of strong waters in the next room with Black Mole. Bid him come to me. Scene three, Locket Filch. Why, boy, thou lookest as if thou wert half starved, like a shot in airing. One had need have the constitution of a horse to go through the business. Since the favourite child-getter was disabled by a mishap, I have picked up a little money by helping the ladies to a pregnancy against their being called down to sentence. But if a man cannot get an honest livelihood any easier way, I am sure it is what I can't undertake for another session. Truly, if that great man should tip off, twould be an irreparable loss. The vigour and prowess of an errand never saved half the ladies in distress that he hath done. But, boy, canst thou tell me where thy mast is to be found? At his lock, sir, at the crooked billet. Very well. I am nothing more with you. Exit Filch. I'll go to him there, for I have many important affairs to settle with him, and in the way of those transactions I'll artfully get into his secret, so that McKeith shall not remain a day longer out of my clutches. Scene four, a gaming house. Macheath in a fine tarnished coat, Ben Budge, Matt of the Mint. I am sorry, gentlemen, the road was so barren of money. When my friends are in difficulties, I am always glad that my fortune can be serviceable to them. Gives them money. You see, gentlemen, I am not a mere court friend who professes everything and will do nothing. Air 44, Lily Bolero. The modes of the court so common are grown that a true friend can hardly be met. Friendship for interest is but a loan which they let out for what they can get. Tis true you find some friends so kind who will give you good counsel themselves to defend. In sorrowful ditty, they promise, they pity, but shift you for money from friend to friend. But we, gentlemen, have still honour enough to break through the corruptions of the world, and while I can serve you, you may command me. It grieves my heart that so generous a man should be involved in such difficulties as oblige him to live with such ill company and herd with gamesters see the partiality of mankind <laughs> one man may steal a horse better than another look over a hedge of all mechanics of all servile handicraftsmen the gamester is the vilest but yet, as many of the quality are of the profession, he is admitted amongst the politest company. I wonder we are not more respected. There will be deep play to-night at Marybone, and consequently money may be picked up upon the road. Meet me there, and I'll give you the hint 
who is worth setting the fellow with a brown coat with a narrow gold binding i am told is never without money what do you mean matt sure you will not think of meddling with him he's a good honest kind of a fellow and one of us to be sure sir we will put ourselves under your direction have an eye upon the money-lenders a rouleau or two would prove a pretty sort of an expedition i hate extortion those rouleaux are very pretty things i hate your bank bills there is such a hazard in putting them off there is a certain man of distinction who in his time hath nicked me out of a great deal of the ready he is in my cash ben i'll point him out to you this evening and you shall draw upon him for the debt the company are met i hear the dice-box in the other room so gentlemen your servant you'll meet me at marybone scene five peachum's lock a table with wine brandy pipes and tobacco peachum lock it the coronation account brother peachum is of so intricate a nature that i believe it will never be settled it consists indeed of a great variety of articles it was worth to our people and fees of different kinds above ten instalments this is part of the account brother that lies open before us a lady's tale of rich brocade that i see is disposed of to mrs diana trapes the tally woman and she will make a good hand on t in shoes and slippers to trick out young ladies upon their going into keeping but i don't see any article of the jewels those are so well known that they must be sent abroad you'll find them entered under the article of exportation as for the snuff-boxes watches swords etc i thought it best to enter them under their several heads seven and twenty women's pockets complete with the several things therein contained all sealed numbered and entered but brother it is impossible for us now to enter upon this affair we should have the whole day before us besides the account of the last half year's plate is in a book by itself which lies at the other office bring us then more liquor to-day shall be for pleasure to-morrow for business ah brother those daughters of ours are two slippery hussies keep a watchful eye upon polly and mckeith in a day or two shall be our own again air forty five down in the north country what gardens are we men every woman's easy prey there we have felt the hook again we bite and they betray the bird that hath been trapped when he hears his calling mate to her he flies again he's clapped within the wiry grate but what signifies catching the bird if your daughter lucy will set open the door of the cage if men were answerable for the follies and frailties of their wives and daughters no friends could keep a good correspondence together for two days this is unkind of you brother for among good friends what they say or do goes for nothing enter a servant sir here's mrs diana trapes wants to speak with you shall we admit her brother lockett by all means she's a good customer and a fine-spoken woman and a woman who drinks and talks so freely will enliven the conversation desire her to walk in exit servant scene six peachum locket mrs trapes dear mrs di your servant one may know by your kiss that your gin is excellent i was always very curious in my liquors there is no perfume breath like it i have been long acquainted with the flavour of those lips hand i mrs di fill it up i take as large draughts of liquor as i did of love i hate a flincher in either air forty six a shepherd kept sheep 
in the days of my youth i could bill like a dove fa la 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 like a sparrow at all times was ready for love fa la 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 the life of all mortals in kissing should pass lip to lip while we're young then the lip to the glass fa la 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 but now mr peachum to our business if you have blacks of any kind brought in of late mantos velvet scarfs petticoats let it be what it will i am your chap for all my ladies are very fond of mourning why looky mrs di you deal so hard with us that we can afford to give the gentlemen who venture their lives for the goods little or nothing the hard times oblige me to go very near in my dealing to be sure of late years i have been a great sufferer by the parliament three thousand pounds would hardly make me amends the act for destroying the mint was a severe cut upon our business till then if a customer stepped out of the way we knew where to have her no doubt you know mrs coaxer there's a wench now till to-day with a good suit of clothes of mine upon her back and i could never set eyes upon her for three months together since the act too against imprisonment for small sums my loss there too hath been very considerable and it must be so when a lady can borrow a handsome petticoat or a clean gown and i have not the least hank upon her and on my conscience nowadays most ladies take a delight in cheating when they can do it with safety madam you had a handsome gold watch of us t'other day for seven guineas considering we must have our profit to a gentleman upon the road a gold watch will be scarce worth the taking consider mr peachum that watch was remarkable and not of very safe sale if you have any black velvet scarves they are a handsome winter wear and take with most gentlemen who deal with my customers tis i that put the ladies upon a good foot tis not youth or beauty that fixes their price the gentlemen always pay according to their dress from half a crown to two guineas and yet those hussies make nothing of bilking of me then too allowing for accidents i have eleven fine customers now down under the surgeon's hands what with fees and other expenses there are great goings out and no comings in and not a farthing to pay for at least a month's clothing we run great risks great risks indeed as i remember you said something just now of mrs cope sir yes sir to be sure i stripped her of a suit of my own clothes about two hours ago and have left her as she should be in her shift with a lover of hers at my house she called him upstairs as he was going to marybone in a hackney coach and i hope for her own sake and mine she will persuade the captain to redeem her for the captain is very generous to the ladies what captain he thought i did not know him an intimate acquaintance of yours mr peachum only captain mckeith as fine as a lord to-morrow dear mrs di you shall set your own price upon any of the goods you like we have at least half a dozen velvet scarfs and all at your service will you give me leave to make you a present of this suit of night clothes for your own wearing but are you sure it is captain mckeith though he thinks i have forgot him nobody knows him better i have taken a great deal of the captain's money in my time at second hand for he always loved to have his ladies well dressed mr lockett and i have a little business with the captain do you understand me and we will satisfy you for mrs coax's debt depend upon it we will deal like men of honour i don't inquire after your affairs so whatever happens i wash my hands on it it hath always been my maxim that one friend should assist another but if you please i'll take one of the scarfs home with me tis always good to have something in hand scene seven newgate lucy jealousy rage love and fear are at once tearing me to pieces 
how i am weather-beaten and shattered with distresses air forty seven one evening having lost my way i'm like a skiff on the ocean tossed now high now low with each billow borne with her rudder broke and her anchor lost deserted and all forlorn while thus i lie rolling and tossing all night that polly lies sporting on seas of delight revenge 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 shall appease my restless sprite i have the red spain ready i run no risk for i can lay her death upon the gin and so many die of that naturally that i shall never be called in question but say i were to be hanged i never could be hanged for anything that would give me greater comfort than the poisoning that slut enter filch madam here's miss polly come to wait upon you show her in scene eight lucy polly dear madam your servant i hope you will pardon my passion when i was so happy to see you last i was so overrun with the spleen that i was perfectly out of myself and really when one hath the spleen everything is to be excused by a friend air forty eight now roger i'll tell thee because thou'rt my son when a wife's in her pout as she sometimes no doubt the good husband as meek as a lamb her vapours to still first grants her a will and the quieting draught is a dram poor man and the quieting draught is a dram i wish all our quarrels might have so comfortable a reconciliation i have no excuse for my own behaviour madam but my misfortunes and really madam i suffered too upon your account but miss polly in the way of friendship will you give me leave to propose a glass of cordial to you strong waters are apt to give me the headache i hope madam you will excuse me not the greatest lady in the land could have better in her closet for her own private drinking you seem mighty low in spirits my dear i am sorry madam my health will not allow me to accept your offer i should not have left you in the rude manner i did when we met last madam had not my papa hauled me away so unexpectedly i was indeed somewhat provoked and perhaps might use some expressions that were disrespectful but really madam the captain treated me with so much contempt and cruelty that i deserved your pity rather than your resentment but since his escape no doubt all matters are made up again ah polly polly tis i am the unhappy wife and he loves you as if you were only his mistress sure madam you cannot think me so happy as to be the object of your jealousy a man is always afraid of a woman who loves him too well so i must expect to be neglected and avoided then our cases my dear polly are exactly alike both of us indeed have been too fond air forty nine o bessie bell a curse attend that woman's love who always would be pleasing the pertness of the billing dove like tickling is but teasing what then in love can a woman do if we grow fond they shun us and when we fly them they pursue but leave us when they've won us love is so very whimsical in both sexes that it is impossible to be lasting but my heart is particular and contradicts my own observation but really mistress lucy by his last behaviour i think i ought to envy you when i was forced from him he did not show the least tenderness but perhaps he hath a heart not capable of it ere fifty would fate to me belinda give among the men coquettes we find who court by terms all womankind and we grant all their hearts desired when they are flattered and admired the coquettes of both sexes are self-lovers and that is a love that no other whatever can dispossess i hear my dear lucy our husband is one of those away with these melancholy reflections indeed my dear polly we are both of us a cup too low let me prevail upon you to accept of my offer 
Air 51, Come Sweet Lass. Come, sweet lass, let's banish sorrow till tomorrow. Come, sweet lass, let's take a chirping glass. Wine can clear the vapours of despair and make us light as air. Then drink and banish care. I can't bear, child, to see you in such low spirits, and I must persuade you to what I know will do you good. Aside. I shall now soon be even with the hypocritical strumpet. Scene 9, Polly. All this wheedling of Lucy cannot be for nothing. At this time, too, when I know she hates me. That dissembling of a woman is always the forerunner of mischief. By pouring strong waters down my throat, she thinks to pump some secrets out of me. I'll be upon my guard and won't taste a drop of her liquor. I'm resolved. Scene 10. Lucy with strong waters. Polly. Come, Miss Polly. Indeed, child, you have given yourself trouble to no purpose. You must, my dear, excuse me. Really, Miss Polly, you are as squeamishly affected about taking a cup of strong waters as a lady before company. I vow, Polly, I shall take it monstrously ill if you refuse me. Brandy and men, though women love them ever so well, are always taken by us with some reluctance, unless it is in private. I protest, madam, it goes against me. <gasps> what do I see? Macheath again in custody? Now every glimmering of happiness is lost. Drops the glass of liquor on the ground. Lucy aside. Since things are thus, I am glad the wench hath escaped. For by this event is plain, she was not happy enough to deserve to be poisoned. Scene 11. Lockett, McKeith, Peachum, Lucy, Polly. Set your heart to rest, Captain. You have neither the chance of love or money for another escape. For you are ordered to be called down upon your trial immediately. Away, hussies. This is not a time for a man to be hampered with his wives. You see, the gentleman is in chains already. Oh, husband, husband, my heart longed to see thee, but to see thee thus distracts me. Will not my dear husband look upon his Polly? Why hast thou not flown to me for protection? With me thou hadst been safe. Air 52, the last time I went o'er the moor. Hither, dear husband, turn your eyes. Bestow one glance to cheer me. Think with that look thy Polly dies. Oh, shun me not, but hear me. Tis Polly sues. Tis Lucy speaks. Is thus true love requited? My heart is bursting. Mine too breaks. Must I? Must I be slighted? What would you have me say, ladies? You see this affair will soon be at an end without my disobliging either of you but the settling this point captain might prevent a lawsuit between your two widows air fifty three tom tinker is my true love which way shall i turn me how can i decide wives the day of our death are as fond as a bride one wife is too much for most husbands to hear but two at a time there's no mortal can bear this way and that way and which way i will what would comfort the one t'other wife would take ill but if his own misfortunes have made him insensible to mine a father sure will be more compassionate dear dear sir sink the material evidence and bring him off at his trial polly upon her knees begs it of you air fifty four i am a poor shepherd undone when my hero in court appears and stands arraigned for his life then think of poor polly's tears for ah oh, poor polly's his wife like the sailor he holds up his hand 
distressed on the dashing wave to die a dry death at land is as bad as a watery grave and alas poor polly alack and well a day before i was in love oh every month was may if peacham's heart is hardened sure you sir will have more compassion on a daughter kneeling i know the evidence is in your power how then can you be a tyrant to me air fifty five i anthe the lovely when he holds up his hand arraigned for his life oh think of your daughter and think i'm his wife what are cannons or bombs or clashing of swords for death is more certain by witnesses words than nail up their lips that dread thunder lay and each month of my life will hereafter be may the case time is come lucy we know our own affairs therefore let us have no more whimpering or whining Air fifty six, a cobbler there was. Ourselves like the great to secure a retreat, when matters require it, must give up our gang, and good reason why, or instead of the fry, even Peachum and I, like poor petty rascals, might hang, hang, like poor petty rascals, might hang. Set your heart at rest, Polly. Your husband is to die today. Therefore, if you are not already provided, tis high time to look about for another. There's comfort for you, you slut. We are ready, sir, to conduct you to the old bailey. Air 57, Bonnie Dundee. The charge is prepared, the lawyers are met, the judges all rang, a terrible show. I go, undismayed, for death is a debt a debt on demand so take what i owe then farewell my love dear charmers adieu contented i die tis the better for you here ends all disputes the rest of our lives for this way at once i please all my wives now gentlemen i am ready to attend you. Scene twelve. Lucy, Polly, Filch. Follow them, Filch, to the court. And when the trial is over, bring me a particular account of his behaviour and of everything that happened. You'll find me here with Miss Lucy. Exit Filch. But why is all this music? The prisoners whose trials are put off till next session are diverting themselves sure there is nothing so charming as music i'm fond of it to distraction but alas now all mirth seems an insult upon my affliction let us retire my dear lucy and indulge our sorrows the noisy crew you see are coming upon us exeunt a dance of prisoners in chains scene thirteen the condemned hold MacHeath in a melancholy posture. Air 58, Happy Groves. O oh, cruel, cruel, cruel case! Must I suffer this disgrace? Air 59, Of all the girls that are so smart. Of all the friends in time of grief, When threatening death looks grimmer, not one so sure can bring relief as this best friend a brimmer drinks air sixty britons strike home since i must swing i scorn i scorn to wince or whine rises air sixty one chevy chase but now again my spirits sink i'll raise them high with wine drinks a glass of wine air sixty two to old sir simon the king but valour the stronger grows the stronger liquor we're drinking and how can we feel our woes 
when we've lost the trouble of thinking drinks air sixty three joy to great caesar if thus a man can die much bolder with brandy pours out a bumper of brandy air sixty four there was an old woman so i drink off this bumper and now i can stand the test and my comrades shall see that i die as brave as the best drinks air sixty five did you ever hear of a gallant sailor but can i leave my pretty hussies without one tear or tender sigh air sixty six why are mine eyes still flowing their eyes their lips their buses recall my love ah must i die air sixty seven green sleeves since laws were made for every degree to curb vice in others as well as me i wonder we hain't better company upon tyburn tree but gold from law can take out the sting and if rich men like us were to swing twould thin the land such numbers to string upon tyburn tree some friends of yours captain desire to be admitted i leave you together scene fourteen macheath ben budge matt of the mint for my having broke prison you see gentlemen i am ordered immediate execution the sheriff's officers i believe are now at the door that jemmy twitcher should peach me i own surprised me tis a plain proof that the world is all alike and that even our gang can no more trust one another than other people therefore i beg you gentlemen look well to yourselves for in all probability you may live some months longer we are heartily sorry captain for your misfortune but tis what we must all come to peachem and locket you know are infamous scoundrels their lives are as much in your power as yours are in theirs remember your dying friend tis my last request bring those villains to the gallows before you and i am satisfied we'll do't miss polly and miss lucy entreat a word with you gentlemen adieu scene fifteen lucy macheath polly my dear lucy my dear polly whatsoever hath passed between us is now at an end if you are fond of marrying again the best advice i can give you is to ship yourselves off for the west indies where you'll have a fair chance of getting a husband apiece or by good luck two or three as you like best how can i support this sight there's nothing moves one so much as a great man in distress air sixty eight or you that must take a leap would i might be hanged and i would too to be hanged with you my dear with you oh leave me to thought i fear i doubt i tremble i droop see my courage is out turns up the empty bottle no token of love see my courage is out turns up the empty pot no token of love adieu farewell but hark i hear the toll of the bell four women more captain with a child apiece see here they come enter women and children what four wives more this is too much here 
tell the sheriff's officers i am ready exit mcheath guarded scene sixteen to them enter player and beggar but honest friend i hope you don't intend that mcheath shall really be executed most certainly sir to make the peace perfect i was for doing strict poetical justice mcheath is to be hanged and for the other personages of the drama the audience must have supposed they were all either hanged or transported why then friend this is a downright deep tragedy the catastrophe is manifestly wrong for an opera must end happily your objection sir is very just and is easily removed for you must allow that in this kind of drama tis no matter how absurdly things are brought about so you rabble there run and cry a reprieve let the prisoner be brought back to his wives in triumph all this we must do to comply with the taste of the town through the whole piece you may observe such a similitude of manners in high and low life that it is difficult to determine whether in the fashionable vices the fine gentlemen imitate the gentleman of the road or the gentleman of the road the fine gentleman had the play remained as i at first intended it would have carried a most excellent moral twould have shown that the lower sort of people have their vices in a degree as well as the rich and that they are punished for them scene seventeen to them mcheath with rabble so it seems i am not left to my choice but must have a wife at last look ye my dears we will have no controversy now let us give this day to mirth and i am sure she who thinks herself my wife will testify her joy by a dance come a, a dance, dance a dance ladies i hope you will give me leave to present a partner to each of you and if i may without offence for this time i take polly for mine to polly and for life you slut for we were really married as for the rest but at present keep your own secret a dance air sixty nine lumps of pudding thus i stand like the turk with his doxies round from all sides their glances his passion confound for black brown and fair his inconstancy burns and the different beauties subdue him by turns each calls forth her charms to provoke his desires though willing to all with but one he retires but think of this maxim and put off your sorrow the wretch of to-day may be happy to-morrow but think of this maxim and put off your sorrow the wretch of to-day may be happy to-morrow finis end of act three end of the beggar's opera by john gay